At first I wasn't going to do an update video on everything Affinity announced last week, but then I found this one feature, this one feature I love, so we're going to go over all of this. The sponsor for today's video is, you guessed it, it is me. I have Affinity Designer courses over on Udemy. If you want to learn more about Vector Illustration, there are some discount codes down below. You can either choose the iPad version or the desktop version, your choice. On to the video. Serif, the company that makes Affinity Designer and Affinity Photo, just dumped a huge update on us. And so we're going to be going over some of the highlights. We got a version update to 1.7 on Affinity Designer and Affinity Photo on both the iPad and on the desktop versions of the app. We also got a huge update on Publisher. Publisher is coming out on uh, June 20th, which is just a couple days away. Affinity Publisher is Serif's version of InDesign, so this fills out their design suite pretty well. I've been fiddling with it. I don't talk about print design because I haven't done print design in years. I used to use InDesign all the time. Back when I worked at ad agencies at the beginning of my career, nowadays I just have my crack team of designers work on everything for me. Hello. I started my career using something called Quark Express. Don't Google it, don't look it up. It was horrible back then. I'm, I'm sure it's gotten better since then, but it was completely replaced once InDesign came out. Me, I'm a masochist, I love Quark. Here we are 15, 16, 17 years later, we're seeing Publisher come out, something to really compete with InDesign. So it's an interesting space. I'm just curious to see how this all comes down over the next couple of years. It's interesting because the way they designed Affinity Designer years ago when it first came out was to fill a lot of that graphic design space. If I'm designing a poster or, or just smaller things, I don't really need something as strong as InDesign. I can just use Affinity Designer to put that together. But if you're doing a large scale brochure, any kind of books, anything that requires really a heavy duty layout tool, that's where Affinity Publisher comes in. One thing to note is Publisher right now is desktop only. That means Windows and Mac. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if at some point in the future they bring it to the iPad, but they haven't announced that yet. If you want to check out Publisher, you do still have a couple days, assuming you're watching this before June 20th, you can go download the beta from their site, test it out, try it yourself, see what you think. And I'm sure after that, there will probably be a, a several day trial as well. I think the initial price is going to be $40. The normal price is $50, just like all of the other Affinity designer affinity photo that sort of thing and also this is you buy it and you own it you're not renting it you're not just borrowing it for a period of time you own it once you pay for it it's great so old school so what serif got to work on next that's a great question will we see video apps will we see something that goes after after effects or they can continue to go down this road of creating more and more apps to fill out everything else that Adobe's doing, or are they gonna stay within kind of the design publishing arena? It, it'll be interesting to see. So when are you getting to this thing about your favorite feature? Hold your chunks, I'm getting there. Nobody says that. Hold your chunks? Nope, not a phrase, dude. Okay, geez. So what is new in Affinity Photo 1.7? A lot of it's under the hood performance updates. These kinds of things don't always look good in a press release, but they're super important. And I love these kind of updates because they're putting the core experience, which is the speed and the performance of the app, above just dumping more features in it for the sake of throwing more features in there. Massive performance increase with full end-to-end -end metal acceleration, eGPU compatible performance scales, at least 2x faster loading with raw files, huge macro and batch processing improvements. Now the big thing that got a lot of attention when this was announced last week was the HDR support that they've now built into the app, at least the desktop versions of the app. Probably because this was announced on the same day or maybe it was the day after Apple announced their brand new fancy pants monitor. And, and no, no, I'm not going to be reviewing that. I can't afford the stand. We got a lot of new tweaks. Let me read them here. We got PSD import export improvements. We've got a more efficient noise reduction symmetry tools up to 32 ways. I'm not sure if all the symmetry tools are new or if it's just the fact that they've added to that and it can now split up in different directions. But either way, it's, it's kind of fun to play with and you can't make anything ugly when you goof around with it. New procedural texture and Veronoi filter effects. If I pronounce that right, I get a cookie. Alternative futures for document history. That sounds very science fiction -y. And last, uh, better support for TIFF files. Who doesn't want that? I could read this whole thing, but nothing really jumped out at me as something that I would absolutely need that I'd use on a daily basis. Most of these are just small quality of life improvements. What, you don't care anymore about HEIF image imports? I don't even know what that is, but but my point is, is it's great to have this stuff in here. There was one thing that I thought was kind of cool, and that is something called sub brushes, and that's the ability to add a secondary texture to any brush. You can double click on any brush and then go to the sub brushes tab. Here you can upload any image your heart desires to be used as a second texture to your brush. For example, I'm just gonna grab this screenshot of my website and and I'll increase the brush size so you can see it. 
Voila. Thank you. This has been another episode of Brad Makes Horrifically Ugly Brushes, starring Kiefer Sutherland. On to Affinity Designer. We're getting arrowheads. Arrowheads, people! We're also getting the HDR, EDR, you know, improvements that we're seeing on the desktop in photo as well. Some node tool improvements, the ability to make multiple strokes and fills on a single shape, PSD import, export improvements, also the sub-pixel brush that we saw on photo just a couple minutes ago, and also 32-point symmetry, just like photo. Really interesting to see a lot of these updates kind of come across apps. It's, it's actually probably a good idea how often have we seen Adobe roll out something for Photoshop and you think man I want that in Illustrator and it either never comes to Illustrator or it comes like three years later so it's nice to see them keeping their apps kind of consistent across the board one thing that we saw Serif mention in their press release was that they tweaked at least on the iPad they tweaked the interface to make it more iPad mini friendly which I thought was interesting because in my iPad mini review I specifically mentioned like I'm not sure how Affinity Designer and Affinity Photo are going going to look on this like small cramped screen but when I booted them up and used them I thought these look really good it was I found it to be incredibly useful anyway I was curious before I updated the app I did a quick screenshot just to see what it looked like and here's the after effect you can definitely tell that they've shrunk down the icons and, and made this stuff smaller it, it doesn't really affect the usability too much I did notice that it seems really really small when you blow it up to the large iPad Pro screen but I'm using the Apple Pencil for the most part to navigate around there so it didn't affect me too much there were two things in Affinity Designer that I was kind of hoping for the very first one is the ability to expand an object like if, if you've got a shape and you want to make that shape bigger you can expand on the outside of it this is something I used to use a lot because if I wanted to outline my characters to be a little bit thicker than the inside lines that I was using I just kind of boost it out expand out the shape itself uh, so I'd love to see that feature added to Affinity Designer, maybe in the next big update. Yeah, but what about raster trace? Yeah, that's the other thing. Uh, Adobe Illustrator has a feature called Live Trace, and what it does is it allows you to take a raster image, a bitmap image, and actually turn it into a vector image. And for a lot of people, that is so core to their workflow. And I've seen comments here on this channel when I talk about Affinity Designer, they say, hey, if they add a Live Trace feature, I will make the jump in a minute. But until they do, they can't, you know, it's just two core to their workflow. We haven't seen that yet. That's another, you know, big thing that I hope they add in the future. I'm sure there are others too. If there's something that you really want to see in Affinity Designer that is not there yet, let me know down below in the comments. When are you going to tell us what you're excited about? Oh, that's right. The thing I'm excited, the most important thing has come to Affinity Designer. They've added a whole bunch of stuff to their isometric grid panel. And I know what you're thinking. The world does not need another Brad Colbo isometric drawing tutorial. Never stopped you before. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. All right, let's do this. All right, so let's take a look at some of the isometric grid features that they added. We're going to start by going up to view, and then I'm going to come down here to grid and axis manager. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. It's going to bring up this box. There's nothing new here yet, but for now, we're just going to click on show grid, which is going to turn on our basic grid. Then we want to take a look at this advanced tab. I'm going to click on that. And from here, I can change the mode. We've got a lot of modes and I want isometric. So I'm going to select that. We have our nice isometric grid. We can always come in here and change it. We can make the grid bigger, smaller, whatever. But what we want to take a look at is this checkbox right here that says create plane set. I don't know why it's checked for me, but if I uncheck it and then I check it again, it's going to open up this panel here, this isometric panel. From here on out, I'm, I'm done with my, my grid options. All I need is this panel. Now, what makes this cool is that we not only have a top-down isometric grid, we have a side view isometric grid, and we have a front view isometric grid. So as you're drawing, if you're having a hard time seeing where you want to draw with one grid, you can flip to the other. And of course, all the snapping and everything that you might want to use here is going to snap to that grid. So that might make it easier for you as well. But what's really cool is when we take a look at some of these other things that are included in this panel. We have edit in plane, fit to plane. You can flip things horizontally. So when you flip something, it's going to flip isometrically horizontally, if, if that makes sense, as opposed to just flipping an object horizontally. It will stay attached to the grid. So let's take a look at this. I have a wheel because it's really hard to draw round things organic things. Shapes that aren't squares or cubes can be a little bit difficult to draw isometrically. And so what you can do is you can take something like this wheel, something round or something with a lot of round elements in it. And when I click fit to plane, what happens? 
it's going to fit directly to that isometric plane. Everything in that group is now fitted to it. I don't have to do any more work. This is a huge, huge time saver. Uh, the other thing I could do is it's not just the top view. This is where the front and side come in. So I'm gonna click on the side isometric grid, change that grid a little bit. Uh, I have another wheel over here. Let me move my first one out of the way. I'll go ahead and select that second wheel. Now that I'm on the side view, what happens when I click fit to plane? I've now fit it to that side. Uh, I have another wheel here. And so we'll go ahead and flip it to the front view of my isometric plane. I'll grab that wheel and fit to plane. Now my wheel's facing that way. So this is so much easier and so much faster to build isometric drawings in Affinity Designer than it was before. It is infinitely easier to do this in Affinity Designer than it is in Adobe Illustrator. A couple years ago, I did this isometric image uh, with all these buildings and it took me forever. And if I had some of the tools then that Affinity Designer has, if I had those now, it would have saved me so much time. I could turn all the windows into symbols and all the people into symbols and I could, I could just draw it so much faster and the cars and everything. Oh my gosh, it would have gone so much faster. So anyway, that is my favorite feature right here in Affinity Designer is just, just this nice little isometric panel. Yeah, I might have to do another full tutorial on this. They're j it's just so cool. Anyway, let me know what you think down below in the comment section. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in a couple of days.